close your eyes, watch your breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths and notice where you feel the breathing. Does it feel comfortable? Does it feel energizing? Does it feel relaxing? If you like long breathing, keep it up. If you don't, you can change. You can change it to shorter, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Experiment for a while to see what kind of breathing energy is good for the body right now, because the needs of the body are going to change, and you want to be on top of them. The breath is what keeps the body alive, and when the breath goes well, it can help keep the body healthy. It gives the mind a place where it can settle down and feel at ease, too. When your mind feels at ease, then you're coming from a position of strength. You look at the world around you and you see things that need to be done and things that should not be done. And even though you may like doing the things that should not be done, if you're well settled in the breath here, you have the strength to say no. Or if the things that should be done are hard, you have the strength to do them. This is how training your mind benefits you and benefits the people around you as well. Because if the mind is feeling weak and oppressed, then no matter how much it can tell itself this really needs to be done, if you don't have the strength, you're just not going to be able to do it. So meditating is what gives the mind strength. You've got the strength of conviction and that your actions really do make a difference in your life. You've got the strength of persistence that when you see something's really good, you stick with it. If something's really bad, then you keep on saying no. You're mindful. In other words, you keep in mind what's important, what's not important, what's right and wrong. And you've got concentration. This is where the real strength comes, is getting the mind into concentration. And then you can use your discernment with a lot more precision. But discernment is what lightens the loads of your life. You see you've been carrying things around. You don't need to carry them around. You learn to let go. As for the things that need developing, you st stick with them. Until you get to the point where they don't need to be developed anymore. This way you can face your life with strength. You're not the victim, you're the active agent here, shaping your life in the direction you want it to go. We're shaping our lives all the time anyhow, but when you train the mind like this, okay, the, the, you do a lot better job to figure out what a good goal is and how to get there. And also judging fairly and objectively when you've gotten there and when you, there's still more work that needs to be done. So think of the meditation as basic training for the mind, something everybody should be doing, so we can live with another, one another and live lives that we look, can look back on and say, I'm really happy I made those choices. I'm really happy I stuck with this. I'm really happy I let go of that. And when your mind is trained, you're much bound to more likely to make the better choices. So it takes some time every day to make sure your mind gets trained and settled down, that you're at home with the breath energy in the body. And that becomes a gift to yourself every day and a gift to the people around you.